All right, I think we are ready to begin. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Zazera. I'm the manager of stakeholder engagement here at the MBTA. And I'm very happy to welcome you to this construction update on the Winchester Center Station Accessibility Project. I'm joined by the project team, including Nathan Ray, a senior project manager who is overseeing the project, and we'll be providing you some updates on what we've been working on. Next slide, please. I'd like to go over a few housekeeping things before we get started. As you probably heard, this meeting is being recorded so that it can be shared with people who are unable to join. You will also be able to watch the recording and download the presentation used on the project website following this meeting. I would like to introduce our ASL interpreters for this evening, Linda and Shannon. They will be providing ASL throughout the presentation as well as during the Q&A portion of this meeting. For closed captioning, please click on the closed caption icon on your control panel. You can adjust the size of the caption by clicking the arrow next to the start stop video, click the video settings, then accessibility, and move the slider to adjust the caption size as needed. Next slide, please. All MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements, preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. Next slide, please. If you have a technical question about Zoom or the features of tonight's meeting, please use the chat function. Our technical assistant will attempt to troubleshoot your problem and help you to the best of their ability. Next slide, please. Following the presentation, we will have a question and answer period. You will be able to raise your hand during this period and I will ask to unmute you so that you can state your question or comment. If you prefer to write a question, you can type it by clicking on the Q&A box and I will read your question or comment out loud. I'll repeat these instructions when we get to the question and answer portion. Next slide, please. Here is the agenda for tonight's meeting. We're going to begin with an overview of the project and give an update on the recent construction activity since our last meeting. We'll then provide a preview of upcoming construction through the spring and review how you can contact the project team and sign up for project updates. We'll conclude with a question and answer period. And now I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Nathan Ray, to continue with the presentation. Thanks, Katie. So we're pleased to be back after six months away, updating the public as to the status and what we're doing here at Winchester Center. Well, what are we doing? Uh, we're, it's a full station reconstruction of a commuter rail station. Uh, we are building two new fully accessible high-level side platforms with canopies, three new elevators, two new ramps and three sets of covered stairs. Also, our project includes new lighting, signage and wayfinding, security cameras and other amenities. Our work also includes new railroad track, ties, ballast, bridge plates and communication duct banks at the platform uh, rail level. Total construction for our project is $50 million. Recent construction activity, a bit about what we've been doing the past six months. 
We've been removing granite stone along the viaduct wall. This is a picture on the left here at Laraway Road. This work involves, uh, creates lots of dust. So we have to mitigate for that with uh, water. You see that there in the, in the center photo. In addition, we've been demolishing the Northeast uh, ramp, we call it. This is the area behind Thompson Street at the Quill Rotary. And so that's been a very delicate part of the, the demolition there because it's obviously so close to neighboring businesses along Thompson Street. So that's a significant milestone uh, that we've completed this past um, this past this past six months. There's some there's still some demo left demolition work left to do, but for the most part, uh, we've we've made uh, about ninety percent of it is complete. Well, what else have we been doing? Down at the Waterfield lot, we've drilled shafts for um, elevator construction and ramps and stairs. You see here a rake. Again, this work has been completed. You'll st still see some uh, smaller rigs on site. These are doing um, other additional uh, structural foundational work. You see here the start of the ramp in the, in the middle photo. This is the foundation uh, for the ramp at the average owner lot. And you see also here an elevator pit being formed uh, and, and ready to be poured. This is, this is all work that happened this fall. There are three elevators on the job, uh, two at the, we call the South End, Aberjona and Waterfield, and an additional elevator at the North near the Quill Rotary. What else have we been doing? Well, we've been doing foundation work at the uh, elevator in the in the water field lot you see there next to the Chamber of Commerce building. Uh, again, more granite stone removal. Some of the a lot of a lot of the granite stone will be reused. That's why it has to be taken down so so carefully. <clears throat> you see here uh, the other smaller rig I was talking about here the, the we call it micro pile installation work this began just last week in, um, this month this is a area of the work behind Thompson Street so that's what we've done what are we doing coming up uh, in the in the winter and early spring uh, continued demolition work and micro pile installation. That's that smaller uh, drill rig you saw. We'll be working on the south end and then moving north. Uh, abutters and neighbors can expect uh, continued noise uh, from construction activity, including heavy equipment and machinery. The work will primarily take place during the day. This is Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's only been a few times when we've gone past that. There's some there's been some waterfield uh, bridge work. Uh, we had to do weekend and overnight work this past um, this past six months. Construction advisories <clears throat> will be distributed ahead of any scheduled night or weekend work if necessary. So this is just a graphic showing what's going on at various locations in the project. Uh, we've broken into uh, kind of north and south or according to the streets, as you'll see here. So at platform level, we're continuing um, some selective demolition. This will be ongoing for the next few months, December, January, February. Down at the south end of the project in the average zone and waterfield sections, we'll be constructing ramps <laughs> and platforms. We call that area the head house. That's kind of the main uh, kind of destination for the station, if you will. Uh, we'll be you'll you'll see steel being erected there in the next uh, six months. 
and as well as uh, that would be steel for the ramps and then steel for the two elevators that are down there. Behind Thompson Street and, and, and at the Quill Rotary, you'll see uh, micro piles being installed. This is foundation work for uh, ramps and, uh, and platforms. And along Laraway Road, you'll see uh, construction again for ramps, platforms, and, and a stairway. And coming up in the next, and within the next month, you'll see utility work happen. Eversource will be starting to do some work there. This is uh, electrical utility work. And I'm gonna pass it back to Katie for public outreach. Oh, I forgot to unmute myself, my apologies. So there are a variety of ways you can get in touch with the project team. Our project inbox is winchesterstation at mbta.com. It is regularly monitored by the project team. There's also a construction hotline, 781-218-9717 for any construction related concerns and questions. Uh, the project webpage, which is updated regularly, is mbta.com slash Winchester Station. And you can also go to that page or just email us to sign up for any updates that we send out on the project. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna begin the question and answer period. Again, um, to, to give a verbal comment, if you wanna hit the raise hand button, uh, I will then say your name and ask you to be unmuted so you can give your comment or question. If you prefer to type it out, uh, the Q&A box, you can type and submit your question and I will read it out loud and we will uh, respond to it as we can. Uh, a quick note, we do have ASL interpreters at this meeting, so we ask that if you could speak a little more slowly than usual so they'll be able to get an accurate interpretation for those who need it. And so with that, I will open it up to any uh, questions or um, comments that anyone may have. Um, Kim, if we could go back a slide just to leave up on the screen the contact information for people so they'll be able to see it. Thank you. So I have a, a written question. Michael Burka asks, when do you expect the station to reopen? Yeah, we expect the station to reopen in uh, the April 2024. We'll, have, we'll be substantially complete in February. And then by April is, is our target date for opening the station. That, that's, 20, that's 29 months of construction uh, from, from start to finish. So I don't, I don't see any written questions or comments queued up. Again, um, type into the Q&A box, or if you'd like to give a verbal comment, feel free to raise your hand and I can have you unmuted so you can give a comment. I'll do um, one more uh, last call. Oh, here we go. Uh, Krista Dix asks, how long will the current fencing that surrounds the project be up? Yeah, the fencing will be there for the duration of construction. I think you'll, you, you probably are talking about areas like Laraway Road and uh, Aboriginal lot. 
um, a lot of those areas need to be fenced off per regulations. Um, obviously, we don't want people wandering into a construction area and there's, uh, there's things that are stored there. Um, so that, that, that fencing will be pretty much right up until we open the station, perhaps a bit prior to the station, we'll be taking that fencing down. We are working generally, just so everybody knows, in a, in a south to north uh, fashion. So we're, we're, we are everywhere like you, like you see, but in general, we're trying to work south to north. So it could be perhaps the south, southern areas will be finished up first. Um, so we could see perhaps, you know, some areas opening up with some fencing coming down in the southern area first. But in general, the fencing will remain uh, throughout construction. Okay, another couple questions have come in. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce any names. Uh, Anastasia Viznevetsky asks, is construction in the next six months expected to be louder, less loud, or the same? I would say the short answer is, is, is it would be the same. Um, you are not gonna see those large drilling rigs out on site anymore. Um, you have these smaller ones. Um, however, I, I'm, it's there's still some construction work going on and, and a part of that nuisance, unfortunately, is noise and, and vibration, uh, dust, these sorts of things. Um, you know, we do have, we are monitoring noise, we're monitoring vibration, and uh, we have uh, mitigation measures in place uh, that the contractor is to follow for these construction nuisances, we call them. So generally, it'll be about, about the same. She also just added, it hasn't been bad so far, at least for this abutter. Well, we're, we're delighted to hear it hasn't been so bad. That's always our goal. Uh, Stephen Lenhart asks, can the tower showing the sign be more consistent with the architecture in Winchester? Um, so, so I'll let Nathan make sure I'm, I'm answering this question correctly, but since the project is in construction, barring anything to do with the safety of the station, the design will not change since it's an act of construction. Nathan, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. It, that that's accurate. You know, some people ask, well, why is it glass? Basically, it's a MBTA uh, way we design things for, for safety. Having a, a glass elevator shaft um, allows you know people to look into the elevator shaft and see who who's in there. Um, if there's some kind of unfortunate breakdown, um, we can see that if there's anyone in in the shaft uh, from from ground level. So that's <clears throat> that's the reason. And there are, uh, there could perhaps be instances where that's not uh, suitable. But uh, generally, that's our MBTA standards to put these these glass um, shaft elevators in. We 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 did try to um, you know in reference to blending the station in uh, the town was uh, we met with town officials. They were very um, uh, they were very concerned that the state some station elements you know blend in with um, the the language, the architectural language of, of, of downtown Winchester. So that's why we, you know, considered and, and, and instituted in the design that the reuse of the, of the granite uh, stone and these sorts of elements in the design were efforts to blend the station in with, with, with the surrounding, you know, architectural language of, of the town. Okay, uh, I have a few uh, questions about the rotary, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put them all together, and Nathan, have you kind of address them all at once? Uh, so the first component, which came from uh, Jack Lemeniger, regarding the work at the Krill Rotary, do you anticipate removing all the trees and shrubbery? And if so, will it be the MBTA who is replacing it, or will it be the responsibility of the town? 
Um, an anonymous attendee also commented, some trees have been taken out of the rot rotary, will they be coming out? And then the last component from Fred Yen, the community at large used to be able to hang banners off the quill rotary to promote events. Are there plans to have an equivalent feature when construction is completed? <clears throat> sure. Our, our work is primarily in the western half of the of the quill rotary. So the part that you see is dug up now. That's where we'll be focusing our efforts. Um, I don't believe that we have anything in the kind of the side facing the eastern side of the of the rotary. So uh, I believe we have in our design elements, uh, landscaping uh, element to uh, to put back there. Uh, I'm not sure to the extent of that right now. I can't honestly. I can't remember. Um, in terms in terms of hanging banners, I I don't know if we have anything particular into the in the design that you know enables that to continue. But certainly, you know, if it was happening before, as much as as much as possible, we're we're okay with that. MBTA is is fine with that continuing. Okay, I do see one hand raised, uh, Stephen Lenhart. If we could have him unmuted so he can speak. All right, Stephen, you should be able to unmute yourself. How's that? Yep, we yep. can hear you. Other than the sign that we see in the picture in front of us, are there other large T signs anywhere else on the property? The, when you're talking about the sign, Stephen, are you talking about the purple one to the left or the large T on the other? The large T on the shaft. I believe that is on the uh, elevator shaft on the average on the water field side yeah. and i believe it's on the elevator uh in the north end of this station behind thompson street at the quill rotary well the the issue is that obviously everybody knows that this is the t station and those signs are not particularly attractive so i guess the question is whether you could just leave them off i Presume that she won't let you, but whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's not something that was, the the old station did not have these large T signs to my recollection, I think is probably what you're referring to. And Correct. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, so we are, you know, a part of what not, we're not just, you know, the station wasn't just in, uh, need, in need of, you know, general rehabilitation, but in, in in doing that, we want to bring it up to standards that have evolved over, you know, the decades since we've uh, come back to been at Winchester. So um, part of the those standards include uh, the branding, and so this this T is part of the branding. And um, you know, I I understand what you're saying, where everybody in Winchester knows that this is the T station. Um, I think it's it's generally a it's just a, a standard signage that we have across all of our stations, you know, that it's unmistakably a T and T stop and this is uh, recognizable and there's some familiarity with uh, with patrons, you know, regardless of where they are, they, they'll know that this is this is an MBTA station. And the, the thing I would add as well is this is primarily done for wayfinding, um, which is also a, a good accessibility tool so people can understand where they're going. Um, and that was the big driver for this project as a whole is not only was the station obviously need in repair of repair, but we had to bring it up into full accessibility, which is the driver for the project. All right, thank you. It's still not particularly attractive, but thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a follow-up from Fred Yen. Um, as far as the banner question, can there be a kiosk feature that can be added? How can we, and up to what point can we influence the design to include these community promotion components? 
Um, again, I'll let Nathan answer this, but seeing as the project is in construction, uh, there are very unlikely to be changes to the design. Um, Nathan, if there's anything you want to add to that. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly is meant by kiosk. Um, I know, um, you know, there's, we don't have anything particular in the design um, where things can be affixed to. I think is that that's referring to that. Um, I'm not sure if, if the if the town wants to uh, engage the MBTA for to do something on their own close to the station. Then we're certainly willing to work with them. So uh, Fred has his hand raised, so maybe he can better explain. Um, Fred, you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, okay, so um, the, there are um, members of the Cultural Council who uh, installed in the Winchmere station uh, a TV screen that had a rotating um, uh, lineup of town events. Uh, I was just wondering if something like that could be uh, included somewhere in the new station. um well i i'm not sure what that would i'm not sure what that would take um this it didn't come up in in the many conversations with the town um I, again this would be something could perhaps it could be added uh after after the station construction is complete by the town um that's 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 the possibility that I, that i would see right now so I guess what I'm asking is um, if we worked with the town, um, at what point would it be still all right to um, add something? Well, I mean, you know, we're we're in construction right now and we had our design uh, completed a while ago and we are, uh, moving ahead with what we've designed. Um, so really uh, our, our focus is to build what we have in our scope right now and and, and complete that work. And um, so that's that's our focus right now is to is to build what we have designed and that design is is complete and we're we're moving ahead with with this. If there's other elements that the town would like to um, include around the station afterwards, then that's perhaps something that can be discussed uh, with the town. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, another written question from an anonymous attendee. What will parking look like? And my guess is this refers to once we're completed with construction, what parking will look like. Um, if, if that's not the interpretation, feel free to, to put in the chat if you had a different question. But Nathan, why don't you speak to once construction is complete, what parking will look like? Sure. Construction will, um, will once it's done, will be, there's some spaces that will be returned to be parking again. For example, all of Laraway Road will return to, to what it was. And, but, and then uh, when you get to, Averjona, there are some, there were some parking spots that were along the viaduct wall that were uh, on MBTA, there were MBTA property and some of those spaces will be lost because we're building a, a pedestrian ramp to get up to the, to the platform there. Um, I think that's about 15 spaces will be lost in the Averjona lot and the rest will be given back. So there's some spaces along that Averjona viaduct wall that are fenced off. Some of those will be returned for parking and some will be, are lost to uh, our construction work that we're doing. But in general, it, it's gonna look like what it did before, except for this Aboriginal lot. Uh, Waterfield will look a bit different. Um, again, our construction um, will be taking up some places that were, that had parking uh, stalls before. Um, there are, in, in general, though, the, the parking will be will be returned to to what it looked like before. I 
I, I don't have any uh, written or, uh, comments in the queue or raised hands, so I'll give it another minute. Uh, I did want to thank um, a few of your electeds who are on the call, uh, Senator Jalen, Rep Chicolo, and Beth Rudolph, your town manager. We really appreciate their involvement and support in this project. And again, one final call for questions and comments. All right, well, if you uh, weren't uh, ready to give a comment tonight or you think of something in a few days, again, we always are available at Winchester Station at mbta.com. Uh, we will be back in the uh, spring summer with another construction update, and we look forward to continuing to work with all of you. Have a great evening.